This is part two of the ganache series, and we want to make sure that we are ready to um, dip our candies into the tempered chocolate. So before we even attempt to temper our chocolate, we want to get our uh, molds ready. So we want to unmold these. This was the one I did in the silicone mold, and my ganache is nice and firm. So all I need to do is remove them from the mold so they're prepared, ready to go into the tempered chocolate. So if these are cold from the refrigerator, they should move, remove very easily. If they get very soft at room temperature, they're gonna be impossible to dip. So keep them cold for the meantime or adjust your, any of your ganache recipes so that they'll be a little bit firmer at room temperature. Now I'm ready to unmold the one I did in the small cake pan and all I need to do is literally lift up those little tabs that I did. Um, invert it onto a cutting surface, take the plastic off, and then you're ready to just go ahead and cut into pieces. So I can mimic the ones I just did, and they might be a little bit longer. I can always trim those edges so they are squared off, and then we can cut them into the same rectangular shape, or you can do whatever shape you like. So you can see how nice and pliable it is. And I'm just using a chef knife to pull that off. Again, nice and cold so that it's um, really easy to work with, nice and firm. If it gets very soft, then your imprint of your fingers will start to push into the ganache. So I'm gonna finish cutting these and then we'll move to our truffles. When you're ready to prepare your truffles, they're nice and firm from the refrigerator, but you can see they have a very, very flat bottom. So in order to make them nice and round to roll very easily, we want to take this in our hand and we want to kind of just push it a little bit and roll it very quickly. Now you can see that it's starting to stick to my gloves here. So what I want to do is put a little bit of cocoa powder to help protect it and not really hold on too much to the truffle. I like to actually squeeze the sides just a little, give it a very quick roll, and then you have a nice round. Again, add a little more cocoa powder as needed. I'm not adding too much. Um, you can also use powdered sugar for this, but I don't like to add any extra sweetness that's unnecessary. But that's what I'm looking for in the round shape of my truffle. Now, a lot of people like to just roll this in the cocoa powder, but again, it doesn't have the longevity because it's not protecting the ganache from the elements. It's exposing it to the oxygen, which means that it will go bad faster and it will start to mold. So if you're gonna eat it right away and you enjoy just ganache rolled in the cocoa powder, then go for it. But if you want that nice crunchy shell and you want it to last for a couple weeks to be protected, then we're going to dip it in the tempered chocolate. And it is much easier to dip or hand roll when they are nice and round and even. So I'm gonna do this for all my truffles and then we'll start the tempering process. So our truffles and our bars are um, ready to be dipped. So now what we need to do is start to temper our chocolate. So what I'm going to do for that is take a microwave safe bowl. I have this plastic bowl here that I'm going to pour my chocolate into. Make sure that it is extremely clean and dry, very important. There is no recipe for how much chocolate to do, but it is important that you understand that you need more when you're actually dipping something so that you have the room to go down. You will probably have leftover, but it can then just be um, set, hardened, and then chopped and re-tempered later on um, at another time. So I'm going to melt this chocolate in the microwave at 30 second intervals, stirring after each 30 seconds until the temperature on it reaches whatever the manufacturer's temperature is. Now on the bag, usually it states what that temperature zone is. Valrona is a lot higher than Calibo. So we're gonna take this chocolate to about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Try really not to go over that. We're looking for the cocoa butter crystal structure to melt completely out, and that's when we can start our tempering process. So you need to use a digital thermometer, melt this until about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So my chocolate has been melting for about two and a half minutes. Everyone's microwave is going to be different, so please make sure you are taking a visual of it. 
and I have still some unmelted chocolate here. I am gonna stir that just to see what temperature it is and if the residual heat will melt that. Just to get a sense of where we're at. Again, I wanna bring it to about 118 and I'm not even at 100 yet. So I'm gonna let it go for another 30 seconds and see where we're at. That extra 30 seconds brought it up about 10 degrees or so. So I'm gonna keep my eye on it, maybe do about 15 seconds because I do not wanna bring this over 118. So um, I'm just gonna monitor this and we'll come back when it's done. All right, so I'm about 118, 119, that's perfect. A little bit lower, a little bit higher, kind of all over the place, but anywhere in that range is great. So um, it's really important that the chocolate is melted to the right temperature so that it does not get something called bloom. And this is a bloom. And this is when the cocoa butter crystals are not in a line structure. Um, and then it's that is what that is. It's not a mold on top. It is actually the cocoa butter that's risen to the surface. So if I scratch this, you can see the chocolate underneath it. And that's what we want to avoid because that gives us our chocolates a very chalky texture and a very ugly look for that matter. So we want to make sure our chocolate is properly tempered and you have to do it from the very get go. Um, otherwise, there's no fixing it later on. So please make sure that you are up to temperature um, and you are constantly stirring and agitating your chocolate. So once it gets up to temperature, we're going to do a process called the seeding method. And that method is one of the three major methods of tempering chocolate. Um, and we get into that in the advanced class. The tabling method is shown on the other video. This method is where we're gonna add some of the chocolate from our bag or the container that you have. So make sure you do reserve some of that chocolate. And then we're gonna add small pieces into here to help cool it down. So in the beginning, when you're starting the um, seeding process, you want to add probably about 10% of the amount of what you have melted in chips. And that will slowly melt into the um, melted chocolate and the warmth of that will go ahead and melt those chips. You have to be very careful as this chocolate starts to cool down, the more chips you add, the less it's going to melt. And then you're gonna end up with little chunks like this um, and that is really difficult to get out. There's another method called the block method where you use a big piece of the chocolate so you only have one thing to remove. So that's beneficial. It does take a lot longer to bring the temperature down. So the second temperature range we're looking for to bring it down to is about um, 82 to 86. And that's quite a distance lower. So we gotta make sure that we're diligent about stirring. Don't just set this aside and expect it to cool down. Um, in order to temper, you need to create agitation with the chocolate and that's with the cocoa butter crystals so it'll realign. So not just cooling, but also agitation. So you do need to constantly stir this. Um, you can walk away maybe for a couple minutes if you need to do something and then come back to it. This is why a machine is really nice and handy because it stirs it the entire time. But we are the machine today. You can see that almost all of those pieces are gone. So I wanna add a little bit more and then we will take a temperature. You wanna do most of this cooling while it was first initially hot so that those little chips do melt out. Now you can do this over a double boiler, but you do run the risk of getting the moisture into the chocolate, which it doesn't like, and it makes it very thick and hard to dip. This particular chocolate, the Calibo, is on the thicker side anyway, and when you purchase a bag of this, um, or any bag of chocolate wholesale, you should be able to see the fluidity and it's in like um, drops and it'll tell you how fluid the chocolate is. So you know if it's better for dipping or for molding, um, if it is more fluid. So let's take a temperature of this. We still have a few more pieces to go, but it is only dropped to about 102 degrees, 103. So not significantly and we have quite a ways to go. So I'm gonna keep adding smaller amounts of chocolate at a time and just stirring um, in order to bring down the temperature. 
So after constant stirring and um, taking the temperature, I've gotten it down to about 87. It takes a good amount of time, so don't feel rushed during this. Don't get frustrated. Um, this is a labor of love. So now I'm down 86, 87, and I wanna keep stirring. And a good indication that you are on your way to tempering properly is where the outside edges just start to set. So my chocolate here is getting hard on its own. You wanna try and keep the sides as clean as possible because what you don't wanna do is scrape any hard pieces into that chocolate. And if you do notice there are some maybe that are not completely melted, there's one little piece here. I'm gonna try and remove that very gently and um, just take it out without removing too much of the chocolate. So, um, we want to retain as much chocolate in the bowl, keep it as clean as possible, scraping it down on the sides. And if you want to use it, dip and use this chocolate right away, 86 is perfect. If you want to store this chocolate for a longer period of time, you want to take it down as low as 82. I'm going to aim for right in the middle, so about 84 um in order to be able to have this last at least a week or so with a nice temper a nice shine to it so i'm going to let it go a couple more degrees just by stirring and scraping the sides and then i will show you the way to heat it back up for working temperature so this process requires a lot of patience and i recommend anyone doing this to really um, notch out some time in your schedule to do it without any distractions and really have all the right tools at your disposal. So right now, um, I am at 84. It's wavering between 84 and 85. There are a couple ways to warm it up. So working temperature in order to dip or mold is between 89 and 91. You can use the, the uh, microwave one more time, but this time it needs to be in like five, 10 second intervals. So you do not go over 91 degrees. That is the most critical. If it goes under, you can just bring it back up. But I'm gonna be using a heat gun. Now maybe some of you have this in your garage and you don't even know it. Um, this is just from Home Depot and it just will just create a warmth to the top that I can stir in and it will bring up the temperature just that few degrees that I need. So what I'm gonna do is turn it on low Again, if you do not have this, you can use the microwave again as we did melting it, but just a few seconds at a time. So I'm gonna try and keep that thermometer inside of there. And very, I have this on low, moving it around. And I wanna bring this up between 89 and 91. So I'd like to try and keep it in the middle, about 90 degrees. I'm holding it a little bit away from it so I'm not getting too hot on the surface. You can see it goes very quickly, 89. I'm gonna bring it right to 90 and then we're gonna do a test. So my chocolate's at 90 degrees. Whoop, it's going down a little bit. It could just be that one area so you wanna make sure you really stir it thoroughly. And in this case, slower is better. You have more control over the temper. Again, now you know why chocolates cost a lot of money if they're doing them by hand. Most manufacturers have machines that do this for them that can control it much, much easier. Okay, so what we're gonna do what's called a test now. And this is crucial before you start dipping any of your chocolates to make sure that it is actually in temper and that you weren't just guessing on your own. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of chocolate and spread it on to something thin and kind of cool. So I have this on my sheet pan here and it does not need to be thick. It can just be nice and thin like this. And we wanna see if this sets within about two to three minutes max and it should stay nice and shiny. If it is wet after three minutes, then most likely this is out of temper um, not per not yet ready or you've gone over the temperature where you've melted the crystals out. So we'll take a look at this in just a minute as it sets. So you can see now that my chocolate is set. It's not wet at all. And that's a great indication that I have a really good temper going. So I'm ready to dip. And the most important thing is that you maintain that temperature 
of around 90 degrees. You can be between um, 87 and, um, and 91, but generally you wanna be like 89 to 91 is ideal. So the beautiful thing about the heat gun is that as it starts cooling a couple degrees, I can put it on for a couple seconds to bring it back up to temperature. If you have to keep using the microwave, you have to be very, very cautious. At any minute, you can go over the temperature. If you go over the temperature, you've thrown it out of temper, you have to start right back at the beginning and do it again. So again, a labor of love. So the tools that we're gonna use to dip our candies, if you choose to dip them instead of roll them, um, are dipping forks. Now, if you don't have these, you can use regular forks. They work just fine, but these are a little bit thinner and a little bit um, easier to handle and made for this particular um, purpose. But again, regular forks, the thinner the tines, the better will work for that as well. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna get our bars first. Now, if the bars um, were starting to warm up a little bit, you can put them in the fridge. We don't wanna do it super cold because that will start to set our chocolate a little too fast. So be aware of the temperature. All right, so I have my Vison Plus set up. I have my dipping forks. I have a pan that this is gonna go onto. I have my ganache, uh, my molded ganache, and I have my uh, chocolate ready to go. It's at 89, 90 degrees. I make sure that I have my thermometer in there the whole time and keep something in there so I can stir. But give myself enough space that I can work with. So I'm gonna take one of these and dip it in and then kind of press it down to coat it and lift it up kind of at the end of the tines here tap it on the sides we don't want a lot of chocolate on there we want it to drip off so i just kind of tap it on the side sometimes people dip it in here and it kind of helps pull the excess chocolate off the bottom and then you want to place it onto your um, parchment lined sheet pan and then drag it off with the other one so we want to try and avoid getting a foot I'm gonna take this again, dip it inside, very gently lift it out, tap it off. Again, you can use the method of on the chocolate, you're letting the chocolate, whoops, chocolate pull the chocolate itself off. Gotta get it on the fork enough so it doesn't fall off. Some people even do this. Um, it's up to you. Now you can see because these are cold, they're starting to set very, very quickly. This is gonna get wasted in on the outside edge, so I like to kind of not drip it off, but everyone has their own method of doing this. Now, if you wanna make a design on the top, you wanna to do it before your chocolate starts to set. So on this next one, we're gonna place it onto here. And then I'm gonna take this and then make a design on top. So if it's wetter, that one was a little set, you can see now if I do this, that's how they get those designs on there. So I'm placing it here and I'm dragging it over so it creates like a little ridge. If you want later on to take some of this chocolate and drizzle on top, you can do that, or you can brush some luster dust. But if you want to sprinkle something and have it stay on, such as nuts or coconut or anything that you wanna do, it has to be while it's wet, so it's almost a two-person job. So I'm gonna to continue to dip these. Um, in the next round, I will show you how to do it with a regular fork. So using two regular forks, these are kind of more cheap forks that are skinnier. Mine are a little bit um, larger tines. This works better. So I'm gonna do the same thing by dipping it inside lifting it up. It, my bowl is a little deep, so this is harder. The other um, dipping forks I have is at a stronger angle. So then you can, this will also um, trap more chocolate on here, so you do kind of have to wipe it off. And then with another fork or utensil, you wanna kind of push it off very lightly. And that's how you wanna do it with regular forks. It just gets more of a buildup here versus this one going through. So that's the major difference. part of all of these techniques is really keeping this in temper the entire time um, keeping it at that 89 to 91 degrees so that is what's the most challenging while you're working with the chocolate so as it starts to cool down just a little bit I like to use the heat gun because I have it you will have to put it in the microwave if you don't have this for just a couple seconds at a time maintaining that temperature 
If you don't maintain that temperature, you will notice a huge difference in your final temper, um, and it could be very streaky, um, it might not set, and it will be very inconsistent. So to keep that consistency, this is a very important thing, and to also work very clean. So our truffles are the last things um, that we're gonna dip here, and this I'm gonna use a, a hand motion, but I will show you this is the dipping fork for a round truffle, and what we do is we insert it into the chocolate, you lift it up like this, tap, not tapping too hard because we don't wanna embed it into that little swirl there. And then you usually take it here and you swirl it on the top. So you invert it and then swirl it. This takes a tremendous amount of time versus doing this by hand for a very similar look. So what I'm going to do is do the hand method. So you wanna have a production style set up here with my, I'm right handed, so I'm gonna do my truffles here, my um, uh, chocolate in the middle, tempered chocolate, and a clean pan ready to go here. Now, if you wanna add a topping to it, again, while it's wet, this is kind of a two-person job because both hands are going to be full of chocolate, um, so you can add that, but again, while it's wet, so you have limited time. These are best, these are a little firmer than the other ganache, so these can be left at room temperature and they'll be fine. So the first thing I wanna do is put a little bit of chocolate in the middle of my hand, and then I want to just kind of move it around and then transfer it from this hand to this hand and drip it off the side. Now don't be afraid to put a decent amount of chocolate. I personally like to just roll run truffle at a time um, instead of two or three. Make sure it is fully coated and dip it off the side of my hand, not the front of my fingers. And that will avoid any excess um, chocolate drippings all over the pan. So fully coated, transfer to my right hand, drip off on the side. Once in a while, I like to scoop up the excess chocolate so I'm not wasting it. If you have cold hands, gloves are absolutely essential because it will help protect the truffle. So this gives you a very similar look to the first one um, and with a, a, just a lot more efficiency. And if you find that your coating is a little too um, thin, you can always go back and do a second coating, but just make sure that you are putting an appropriate amount in your hands and then scooping it up every so often to not waste any of that. chocolate garnishes, you have some um, guitar sheets, which is a, a nice bendable acetate sheet. Um, if you do not have a stainless steel surface to put this on, do it on the back of a sheet pan and you want to drizzle just a little bit of a vegetable oil over the top and rub it in so that this sheet will stay and it won't move around and that's going to be much easier to work with. So what you want to do now is Pour some of your tempered chocolate just on one portion of it. And then place your other sheet right on top. So you can cut those guitar sheets so they really fit um, the space that you need. And then hold on to it and smear it out with like a rolling pin. If you have a PVC pipe, that'll work fine. And what you're trying to do is just make this nice and even, keeping it on the sheets. You can also use your um, rubber, your roll scraper. That'll work fine too if you wanna smush this out. These are gonna be just nice and thin and then we can cut these to our desired shape. So you'll learn how much chocolate that you can put on here. And if you do use this tool instead, just a nice even flow throughout. But that's why this works really well because it does it all at one time. So we want to try and avoid that, uh, but I'm working with a very small sheet right now. So you can lift this up just to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan. And then we're going to let this set a little bit. And the beautiful thing about using the sheets on the top and the bottom is that it will give you a shine on both. So, um, so make sure that uh, you do that. If you don't do that, that's still okay. It will tend to curl up if you let it get too hard, but you can still cut any shape. So what I have here is just some uh, round cutters and once it starts to set and you'll see when it does um, again we're in temper still that you can cut this out you can use the back of a knife and um, use that to score any design that you want 
So I believe this is on the other video as well, so you can really see how it works. But these are the sheets that you're gonna to use to do that garnish. Okay, so as this starts to set, and you can do it right on here or you can transfer it onto any surface that you like, that you feel comfortable cutting on. And I'm just gonna push down. I'm not trying to cut through, but I am trying to make an indentation so you can kind of see around it. And that's what's important is that you go hard enough that you can see almost a clear circle around your garnish. So we wanna work fast. There we go. And then once this completely sets, we'll pull this off. We don't wanna pull this off too soon um, because then you will not get the shine and it potentially could stick to the plastic. So all of my items have set and I've cut through, this is the ganache with the dulce. Um, and it's super thin coating and that's exactly what you want. You don't want to waste a lot of chocolate on the outside. You want it to have a really nice crisp uh, light texture and it just coats it all the way through. Same thing with the truffle here. It encases it so it really protects it and makes it um, safer for a longer period of time and you really want that nice creamy inside. So it gives you that crunchy outside, the creamy inside. And then here are our garnishes. And I always like to refrigerate this for about 10 minutes or so because when you peel off the plastic, it gives you that beautiful shininess. And it doesn't always do that um, beautifully from room temperature. So just throw it in the refrigerator for a couple minutes and you can see that they're coated on both sides with the shine. So these have a really sharp texture to them um, and that's from cutting with the plastic on both sides of them. So these are easily stored. You can keep them at room temperature um, in an uh, airtight container or just on a sheet pan. Um, if it's really hot in your room, you can refrigerate them, but that's not where they're supposed to stay. So a nice cool space uh, and these are all ready to go. One last design element is if you want to use these um, petal or luster dust, you can place a little bit of alcohol or extract in the cup and then add in your color with a paintbrush and just brush it on to the top of your truffle like this. So this will signify that I did an orange truffle. So it just gives you another little element of description and visual interest. When you're completed with all of your tempering projects, you do want to take any excess you have, pour it out onto a piece of parchment paper. What you don't want to do is leave it in the bowl to harden because it's really hard to get it out of there. And so this way it will harden on its own and then you could just chop it up and melt it again. So we're going to remove as much as I can and just let it set right on to the paper. And that can be reused over and over.